Hey guys, Mick with Bussaroo here. Um, I had an idea. I do a lot of engine wiring harnesses, conversions for uh, Subaru engine swaps into VWs. And um, since I do a lot of harnesses, I figured, hey, I should just start taping them and showing you kind of the progression through all the steps. So this time we're going to take a look at a 2000 Subaru Legacy into a... 85 Westphalia Vanagon. ECU. And it looks like a skinned harness. The, uh, most of the wiring loom protectant split loom stuff has been removed it looks like so let's get it up on the table lots of wires on the table you can see that it's kind of intimidating <laughs> for a lot of folks so these are of concern here these are the engine plugs that go into the engine harness this is the o2 connector for the front and rear o2 sensors uh, we have the computer here. This came from an automatic transmission uh, Subaru. So these go to the uh, transmission control unit and we're gonna just clip these off. In fact, I think the best way to move forward is to just clip all the unnecessary connectors and show you what's left over. Still a mess, but starting to look a lot more manageable. Hey, here's a box full of connectors and wire that we don't need. All the connectors, unnecessary, the unnecessary connectors have been cut. So let's just go through it real quick. So ECU, obviously don't cut those. Um, these little guys are for grounds and power supply. We have a uh, test mode connector. Goes through a ground up to the engine connectors here. Uh, also, we have this is in the engine bay. You can tell by this greasy wireline protector. And it goes to the starter connector. And we follow this gnarly mass around. And all of the wires connectors have been cut except for we have our OBD2 connector, fuel pump relay, main ignition relay, and this is the relay for the blower fan. Um, oftentimes I use this for, uh, uh, I connect it to the Subaru uh, fans. Um, I just splice the wire because it's a really common relay. We won't need that on this fan again, but. Um, I kept it anyway. Now all these loose wires, I'm just going to pull out of the harness. Already starting to take shape after removing all the unnecessary loose ends. You can see the harness is much more manageable. So it's still in its same kind of orientation. Computer, test mode, engine connectors, grounds, sensor grounds. These are the wires we're going to identify later that were attached to the ECU, but to uh, connectors we cut earlier. And the only other thing left, the relays. I took that blower fan relay out and the OBD2 sensor. So next up, going to identify these guys. All of the wires are now identified. Uh, I've got them in, sorted into a couple groups. Um, these are all tank sensors. So these are for fuel pressure, um, things like that, the drain valve, all that. Right there, that's one group. This little wadded up group. This is for things we're going to just pull out of the ECU connectors. And we have the items we need to run up to where it's going to connect in the black box in a van again. So you can see it's kind of turning out nicely. 
a little less intimidating than at first. Uh, when you're going to do your identification, grab yourself a pin out. It looks like kind of like this. It has the connectors and the legend. I'll have a link in the description to the resource page of my website and you'll be able to find it there. Next up, I'm just going to pull these out of the ECU connectors and route these over toward where the engine connectors go. And I'm just going to tidy these tank sensors, um, tidy them up a little bit. Fuel tank wires are cleaned up here and have a couple wires going up to where the relays and the OBD2 uh, connector are. Um, radiator fan high and low as well as the check engine lamp. I like to put them in here. You can easily attach it to this little bezel and it's not, I mean it's just real close to the ECU. I like that. And then it comes around here. These are all the cables that are going to be going to the black box and there are the engine connectors. Real quick on this particular harness, once again it's a 2000 uh, Legacy. Um, these are the wires that I pulled from the ECU connectors. 130, so um, connector 135, which is this orange one, pin 25 needs to be grounded. Whether it's going into an automatic transmission van or a manual transmission van. So what I oftentimes do is I'll grab a pink wire. So that's actually what this pink wire is. This one that's coiled up right here. Um, and I'm gonna be grounding that a little later, but you need to ground that. That sets the ECU into its manual um, ignition and fuel maps. So just take one of the wires that you pulled out that you didn't need anymore and put it into pin one or connector 135 pin 25. Another quick note, um, I usually use this grommet. Um, it's very circular in shape. It kind of squishes into a circle. Usually a small hole saw will do the trick in the firewall uh, under the seat or underneath the Westy cabinets. And uh, they were great because you can fit these massive connectors through a hole that large um, when you're trying to feed everything through. Um, if you're trying to feed these through a grommet that fits this snugly, you're going to be in a world of trouble. So anyway, I like to use these and now's a good time to thread it on. The problem with this particular harness is that the owner had cut it. So it was kind of detached from this harness. I may still include it um, just because uh, it's better than trying to find a grommet at the store because nothing is going to be this size. So now that everything is pretty much routed how we want it all to go, uh, we have seven uh, splices that we need to make. So this one near the relays. We have a couple grounds, uh, one for the test mode connector, one for the main ignition relay, this guy, and the pink wire that I spoke of earlier to tell the ECU that it's going to be a manual transmission. And then this is the spare ground wire, it's a black and red that came from another connection further down the line here. So that's one connection. Then we need to splice the battery connections. Funny enough, grounds and battery connections both use black and red. So don't get too confused here. <laughs> Just make sure you plot everything out. Anyway, this is another connection that needs to be made. One of, one of these is going to the black box in the van again. This one here is going to supply battery voltage to the ECU. And then this guy provides battery voltage to the fuel uh, relay and the main ignition relay, as well as the OBD2. Okay, then we come down and we have 
three more splices for the vehicle speed sensor. This is the Bussaroo uh, speed sensor and bracket. You can find that at Bussaroo.com. And then we have two more for a Vanagon using the Vanagon stock gauge. We need to take the water temperature wire, which is generally white with a green stripe, and put a 33 ohm resistor somewhere in it. So generally I just cut it, splice that in. And then the AC switch, which is also going to the black box to connect for AC. This guy uh, just is too short, just needs to be extended. So that's up next. All of the connections are made. And so now we're uh, testing. So I've got the iPad out with OBD Fusion and the Elm 327 reader. We have test mode plugged in and you can hear the fuel pump relay clicking on and off. Right there, we've got it plugged into the um, 12 volt Milwaukee little test pack for my cordless ratchet. So I've got the battery connection right here in this red. Got the uh, ignition on source and we've got the ground. That's really all we need right now. So the fuel pump is connecting to ground and it's also connecting to the fuel pump wire here. This is the VSS and what we're going to do is you can see it kind of triggering right there and it corresponds to this guy right here. I can only generate about six miles per hour max so it's with the uh, scale is on this little test rig I have. So this is just a very basic bench test but it lets us know whether or not the OBD2 functionality is working, VSS, fuel pump, things like that. Taped up at somewhat regular intervals and then we'll throw the split loom on. Here is the final shot of the main harness. So we have the OBD2, the relays, some of the spare wires. These are for um, your fan relays if you choose to have the Subaru control the fans. Test mode connector, tank uh, wires. You can wire in some relay or uh, some resistors and eliminate some codes. Uh, grommet. We have the starter. Uh, I'm sorry, the fuel pump cable here and the VSS. And we have the engine connectors and everything going into the black box. Remember, this is on a Vanagon. So on a bus, we're a bug. They're all gonna be right by the computer. All the access is right there. But on a Vanagon, you swing them out to the black box. So we have like the starter switch, ignition switch, battery, um, AC switch, neutral switch, uh, tack, water temp, and oil pressure switch. So now let's take a look at the alternator harness. Here is the alternator harness. We have the main connector, then the lug, the charging lug, and the big white wires. They I generally recommend taking those, throwing a big copper lug, and going to the um, battery lug on the back of the starter. We have the um, alternator lamp, and these are from, or we're going to the AC compressor, this guy right here. So that kind of does it for the alternator harness. A quick thing to mention on the uh, harness that we saw, I only taped the uh, outer split loom uh, every now and then. And that's just because uh, it gets real stiff if uh, I'm trying to pack it up or if you're trying to route it in the actual vehicle. Um, it's, it, it gets real stiff if it's uh, taped all the way. But I do recommend once installed taping it or taping it prior to install. So just a quick heads up as to why that is the way that it is. That wraps it up for the 2000 Subaru Legacy harness into a VW. This one in particular was for a Vanagon, but pretty much the same process for a Bug or a bus or a Carmagia or a Porsche or anything like that. Um, the owner of this harness is going to get uh, all that we've talked about plus a um, instruction sheet. So I'll get an 
itemized instruction sheet based on the label. So that's pretty helpful. Um, fairly intimidating process, but as you saw, you know, it's, it's not as tricky as you might imagine. So let me know if you have any questions and uh, keep an eye out for other harnesses.